My name is Scott Rumschlag, and this is my home-built expanding table, almost entirely wood. Let's take it for a spin, and then you can see how it works. What we have here is the frame down low and this is shaped the way that it is so that you can hopefully get your knees under the table enough to sit there comfortably. And then we have the support level here which is two half inch pieces of birch plywood glued together. Again, not too much special there. But after that we get into the action. This here is what I call the lower level. This is what rotates. This piece here is a, is a stiffener that sits on top of that. They're glued together. And these are part of the lower level. This here is the upper level. And this is the part that rises up and lifts the lifting panels when they everything comes up to the same height. So this here is all sitting on the lower level. And these are the lower level sliders which come up here and support the top panel. This is the top panel. This piece is always showing on top. This one over here is one of the ones that comes up in the middle and then down there in the center you can see a little bit of the spot for the groove in it. That's the center star. And you'll notice that we've got three different heights here. We've got the upper level on top, or the main surface, then below that are the raising panels, and then below that, in the center, is the center star. So you can see how we really ran out of space on this table trying to make it as thin as we could because with, with just your, your top panels you've got three quarters, three quarters, three quarters. That's two and a quarter inches plus a little bit for play that you've already taken up before you have any room for the mechanism. And you can see that they're pretty close together here. This piece is a linear bearing, and the way that that works is that hardened shaft that's sticking up is welded to a flange, which is then attached to this lower level. The fatter piece here is the bearing which rides on that hardened shaft, and that just keeps this lifting level properly aligned. So it keeps it aligned in the X and Y, but it can go up and down as it needs to. The thing that lifts it up are the rollers. As we begin the rotation, you can see that this part has the lower sliders have already begun to slide out, as have the upper ones, although it's not as clear here. And the thing that's pushing all these out are, is the arm in the center, which is hard to see here. But you can see the very the bolt there, the very bottom of the bolt, rather. As we continue to rotate, you can see these retractable rollers here. These are spring-loaded. And the purpose of that roller is to flip down into a space and then lift it up once the table gets fully expanded. And the reason why I went with retracting instead of fixed is that if these rollers were fixed, that would mean that this wheel has to be down here, which means the support layer can't be there. And there's four of these lifting panel, uh, lifting rollers, two on the outside like this one, close to the outside, and two further in so they don't interfere with each other. And having to have those slots that go most of the way around the circle where the wheels are would make it quite a bit weaker. So I came up with this retracting system and I feel pretty pleased with it because you need this support level to be as strong as possible, as far out as possible, to maintain the table stiffness. You can see that things are still at different heights, but they've opened up enough 
that the panels are clearing each other and there's space between them for these tongue and groove panels to clear because it has to open up far enough for them to clear, rise up, and then come back together. What we've got here is that roller that we mentioned. It's still in the retracted position. It's going to flip down and then ride up the ramp. So let's see it. Continue rotating the table, which is now at its fully expanded point. It's down. And it lifts it up. And we can see now that the entire table has become the same height. We can get these panels pretty close together as you can see here on the height alignment, but they never seem to end up quite perfect. So we have a tongue and groove system and when the pieces compress together, it helps align them vertically just to get that little bit of correction. That gives us a pretty good overview of the main panels. So let's look at that star now. The star is the tricky one. It has to come up twice as far as the other ones. And we have some constraints on the space that we can do it in. So if you recall the ramps that we saw earlier, they go about 8 inches from here to about here. That's the distance of their arc and they go up about one inch, 25 millimeters. And if we project that into the center of the table, you see how big the arc is here. And then that same arc closer to the center is much, much shorter, less than half. So when you have to come up twice as far, and you have less than half the distance to do it, you're going to have a very aggressive ramp, which becomes impractical. It requires a lot of force to push up it, and you just end up with issues. So we needed another system. So we're going to pull this star right out. We'll look at the bottom of the star on its own in a minute. And you can see here, we have the lifting levers. And those are fixed to the support level, actually, way down in here. They do not rotate. This level rises up, and it does rotate, and it uses mechanical advantage to lift one height in the center of this, and it makes it double at the outside. And that's all there is to it. It'll make more sense here. So now you can see they're down and there's a slight recess here so that they sit flush and let the star go in there. And then when you rotate the table to expand it, they just lift up. Now, in order to keep the star itself where it needs to be, we have a couple different things. We have another linear bearing here, which has a corresponding hardened shaft in the center of the star, and that helps keep the star aligned vertically and it keeps it centered. Now the star is going to want to rotate, since it's rotating while these are not. These always stay the same relative here. The star has to follow the alignment of this. And that's accomplished with a couple slots here, which slide into holes in the table here and here. Now we can take our center star and set it in place. We have to find that center piece. And there you go. That's about it. Those are the main secrets of the table. If you want to watch how the inside goes together and the pieces that are there, all the really inside ones, you can watch my time-lapse video. I'll put a link down below. 
And of course, if you'd like to build your own table, I have plans for this. All the info that I've talked about and a whole lot more is laid out in the document. We have dimensioned drawings, ISO views, metric dimensions, everything that I could think of, and and a few things more that other people have suggested. In fact, I've had people email in. They say, hey, we need a clarification on a particular dimension. We put it in the next version. If you buy the plans, you get all the updates in the future free. So I'm grateful for all the support. And even just the views are very helpful. I love that. So feel free to subscribe and look forward to future projects. I'm going to have one out discussing a future project here very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.